How's it going reef builders? Jake Adams here and uh, I've been on a tear visiting a whole bunch of different Australian aquarium stores but I've finally, finally made it to a home reefer's house to see a beautiful uh, private aquarium. This aquarium is absolutely delicious and I can't wait to share it with you guys so let's go. All right so this is the aquarium of Jamie, what's your last name Jamie? Andueza. Andueza. As you can see, this is a what I did like to describe as a colorific reef tank, and uh, man, it's what's really cool. It's a it's a community reef tank with a bunch of stuff inside of it. Uh, there's everything in the under the sun right here, and really the first thing that struck me is these two bastrias right here on the wall, right on magnets. I thought I was the only one who was a junkie for keeping two bastrias or any kind of corals on magnets, because that way you can take advantage of some real estate on the wall. But uh, pardon the glare, I'm gonna try my best to show you the entire reef tank. Um, but this thing truly is a really, really awesome reef tank. It's got a lot of character. It's got some old fish, some old corals. Um, you can tell that this thing was not set up overnight or even a couple years ago. This thing has a kind of a lot of history going on in it. And uh, name a coral and it's probably in it. It's got a really, really interesting filtration system and uh, an even more interesting uh, maintenance regime um, that I really can't wait to tell you about. But first, um, let me take give you like a little tour of some of the uh, highlight corals of this reef tank. Jamie? Hello, how are hey, you? Can you pronounce your last name for me? Andueza. Very cool, <laughs> man. I can tell just by looking at this reef tank that uh, you've been working on this for a long time and that you love it. Um, so I'm just going to ask you some questions as we go through it from one side to the other. And uh, you know, we're just reefers talking about our tanks. Um, tell me briefly about your tubastreas. You said some of these are actually uh, born in the aquarium? Yeah, that's right. I had a large tubastria and it spawned. And uh, one day I realized that it had stuck to one of the, uh, the propellers at the back and uh, it grew. It's actually this one, the largest one. So it's been there for about four years now. And uh, then in time, two others appeared. Do you, um, do you target feed them in here or they? No, I, I actually feed the fish on, in this corner. Wow, so, uh, that's, that's incredible. That's why they get uh, food. Yeah, it's, uh, these so the tuba strays you can train to be open during the day. But, that's right. Uh, two dendrophilos that kind of do what they want. I love how you have, uh, you know, like a six or seven hundred dollar MP60 and then some cheap uh, Fish Street uh, propeller heads that's right. around it just to kind of <laughs> increase the flow. Um, tell me about this green staghorn. So in America, we have uh, the green slimer, and you you guys call this the Dallas. That's right. Uh, Dallas. How, how long has that strain been around Australia? I wouldn't know, probably, well I've had it for a long time, probably about six, seven years uh, myself, so I'm sure it's been here longer than that. Very cool. And there's the uh, obligatory uh, gold tip elegance coral that I keep seeing in all of the best uh, display tanks. You know, it's just a, something that just like, popped up on my radar and all of a sudden, you know, I see it everywhere in Australian tanks, so that's definitely an Australian specialty. I love how you have the Pavona Maldivensis, the orange and the green together, but we already discussed uh, taking them down a little bit. Yes, that's right. Um, Got to give some love to the native uh, Duncano Samia corals and uh, you know uh, Australian pretty much native. Uh, moving along, you have this Isis uh, Gorgonian up here. Very cool. I like the placement of it, and it's grown really, really dense. I know it's not the most colorful thing, but it's uh, it's cool to uh, to have appreciation for just like a different growth form. Um, now tell me a little bit about your balmy of corals down here. This is like the reddest trachophilia I've seen so far. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the, some of the creatures in here, um, especially that Yuma. Yeah, well I got that Yuma actually about uh, probably six months ago and I targeted Where'd you get it, it from? Uh, from uh, Gallery Aquatica. They have right. the best Yumas ever. A little plug for Cameron <laughs> on here in there. Very cool. Yes. And you were telling me that um, you have a lot of zoanthids here but you can't keep them here because... Yes, I've got lots of bristle worms. Ah. Uh, at night they make uh, that um, a big feast. So uh, I, can't, I can't keep them in there. I've got all the good uh, zoanthids uh, elsewhere. Well, you know, if you only have one problem in a reef tank, you're actually doing pretty good. And that's pretty light on problems. Um, are these two long tentacle plates related by any chance? No, they're they just not. happen to have two groups. They, yeah, they just look very All right, similar. so what about the sandal coral right here, the sandal litha? Uh, yeah, so I got it about uh, probably six years ago, and uh, it grew from about a uh, 10 centimeter um, frag. Very cool. I love, yeah. you know, it's not the flashiest thing, but no. I just love that appreciation for this coral. 
Very cool. It adds different shapes, which is what I like as well. Yeah, so we're gonna migrate a little bit upwards. I love this uh, classy touch. Your home is absolutely beautiful. And so uh, it's nice to see like the green torch next to the uh, gold torch together. Very, very cool. And then um, I told you a little bit earlier that this is not just any uh, Paslapora, mm -hmm. but Paslapora kellerii, which is, uh, I believe, an Australian endemic, or at least that's where it comes from to us. So that's a really cool coral. I hope you're proud of it. Very proud. Um, and then this is uh, one of the nicer green polyp uh, leathers that I've seen here in Australia. You probably had this guy for a long time, right? Yes, uh, I've probably had it for about five years now, and I keep on trimming it because it grows really fast. And here's like a kind of like the little frag garden of this leather that you've put together. Yeah. That's really cool <laughs> what you've done right there. Very, very nice. And here's, you know, kind of like a, a token purple tip elegant. Very cool. We got some uh, Monopora peloinensis here. Are there any other standout corals you want to point out on this side of the tank? Well, look, I like them all. Um, I can, I can see that. <laughs> yes. I, you're a man after my own heart, just a, a love for a little bit of everything. Yeah, I think diversity is what, it ma what makes it. So uh, I like uh, to mix and match uh, colors, shapes, sizes. I think it all adds to, uh, to the whole look. And um, did I hear correctly that you were um, actually colorblind? I am. Okay. Actually. Yes, so because of that, I always go for, um, for bright colors. And maybe that's also why I appreciate uh, the mix in sizes as well and textures. Uh, it gives to the whole experience for me. Very cool. Um, I think it's important uh, to contrast colors so that you can see uh, them pop, like uh, yellows next to purples or greens next to reds. Yeah, like, um, like I was saying, your, um, your aquascaping is impeccable. You know, you have a lot of heterogeneity to it. You don't have like a big wall of, of rock, a lot of negative space here, a lot of swim throughs, and then um, a lot of the rocks are propped up on uh, thick, heavy branches. This is actually a technique I'm starting to see uh, um, utilized very well and very often here in Australia. Um, let's see, and you have uh, some radions on the top. How many radions are on, on there? There are six of them, and they are Gen 2s. Yeah, so one thing that I love, you know, we always love the latest and greatest, but I'm also thrilled to see, like, um, the previous generation equipment absolutely living up to the task of um, the aquarium. So uh, can you open up the cabinet real quick? Because sure. the amount of filtration that you have on this tank is uh, comically small in proportion. <laughs> Very cool. So you've got, like, a really cool, like, a... Um, Multi-part, I guess, refugium area, right? Yep. Uh, a, a few corals here. Um, a beautiful, beautiful red macroalgae that I assume just kind of <laughs> spontaneously yes. appeared. You got a little layer of ketomorpha, and then uh, not too big of sand bed. And I'm totally against sand bed, but this one is actually proportional to the size of the aquarium. So that's pretty cool. Um, a little bit of biofilter. Um, kind of a Kind of a mid-range protein skimmer for as awesome as this reef tank is. This is a um, Aquamatic uh, Turbo, what is it, Cam? Turbo Floater. Which one? Turbo Floater 3000. Turbo Floater 3000. And um, it can do the job, but, you know, it's kind of plasticky. But, hey, the, whatever works. And then um, the work. you have a, a, a media reactor. You put uh, GFO in there a little bit. Yep. doesn't seem to be running right now. Is it supposed to be? It is, actually. It's just um, but really it's just light. really low. All right. Love now, let's light. get Cam in here. Um, to discuss a little bit of how you really take care of this tank. So Jamie's the owner of the tank and uh, Cam is basically kind of a helper with the aquarium. Tell us about the, ma like the maintenance regime because it sounds like you do one very interesting thing. Well, we basically do very large water changes and so when we drain the tank down, we'll take it all the way down so that Basically, we just leave enough water that the fish are still able to swim, but sometimes they're even on their side a little bit. And then uh, we fill it back up as quickly as possible using natural salt water. So whose idea was it to do these massive water well, changes? I think that it's Jamie's idea. It's something that really, uh, it, it's a little bit stressful sometimes because uh, you have to be very careful yes. with the water quality. You gotta make is, sure that salinity is on is, point. Water is good going back you gotta in. make sure that temperature's salinity, on point. Salinity, temperature, so uh, we'll heat the, the water in winter and make sure it doesn't get too hot in summer. That's nuts, but you know, it's just one of those ways to just like completely reset the reef tank, you know? And your yeah. tank just, it looks impeccable. That's why it's just, it has that such a clean appearance 
and you do very minimal dosing. Yeah. Right? Just a, yeah. a tiny bit of top off. Uh, I'm always pushing that aqua power because I feel like it's crack and makes it makes <laughs> the corals just super happy. Um, do you have any more, uh, I guess, closing statements about your reef tank? Uh, look, I think it's important to um, um, understand what you're doing with your tank. Um, you've got creatures that are living in here, so you don't want to be um, too reckless. Uh, it's important that you do your research, it's important that you buy good products, and ultimately give them what they like, which is uh, as close to nature as possible. Very cool. This is a stupendous reef tank. I love, I really, truly, sincerely uh, love the eclectic mix of corals, um, the large showy fish. You know, I can tell that some of those fish have been your pets for a really long time, and uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it's Kind of tacky to say this is the nicest reef tank I've seen in Australia because this is the only private reef tank I've seen in Australia. But uh, just like Majestic did with my uh, Majestic Aquariums did with my first tour of aquarium stores by setting the bar, this tank is definitely going to set a very high bar for the uh, the other reef tanks that I see here in Australia. So thanks a lot for having me, uh, Thank Jamie. You. Thanks a lot, buddy. I mean, thanks for coming. Give a handshake on Cheers, video. Um, yeah, I know there's going to be a lot of reefers who are going to be very uh, excited to learn more about this reef tank. Thanks a lot for joining me on this video of Jamie's Reef Tank. This is the first private reef tank that I've got to see here in Australia. Um, it was a real treat. This is a very special uh, reef tank. It's got a lot of personality, a lot of character, and um, I really like the you know, no frills uh, filtration system and uh, that 95% uh, water change routine. So if you like that video, go ahead and press the thumbs up button, uh, share with a friend, and be sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time.